The basic components of bacterial cells are the cell wall, the plasma membrane, the cytoplasm, the chromosome, the ribosomes. The outermost structure of bacteria is the cell wall, a semi-rigid envelope that maintains the integrity of the cell in the same way that the skin maintains the integrity of the human body. The cell wall helps protect the cell against environmental changes, for example heat, cold, drought, that would otherwise damage or destroy it. But it allows most molecules to pass through it. This layer is composed of molecules called peptidoglycans, and so this is often called the peptidoglycan layer. We will return to the detailed structure of peptidoglycans and how they are made by the bacterial cell later. Just inside the cell wall is a second, less rigid envelope, the plasma membrane, sometimes called the inner membrane or cytoplasmic membrane, which encloses the cell contents. In bacterial cells, the plasma membrane has two primary functions. First, it serves as a selective barrier to molecules that have penetrated the cell wall, allowing some, such as water and oxygen, to flow easily into the cell interior and restricting the passage of others, such as proteins. Second, the plasma membrane contains enzymes, proteins that cause chemical reactions to occur, that are vital to the life functions of the cell. Bacteria can be divided into two main groups based on differences in their cell wall structure. These differences were first noticed as differences in staining with a dye called Gram's stain. Gram-positive organisms have the structure defined so far, but Gram-negative bacteria have an additional membrane outside the peptidoglycan layer called the outer membrane which contains openings called channels, some of them formed by proteins called porins, which allow nutrients, waste products and fluid to flow into and out of the cell. Some of these channels are non-specific. They allow any molecule up to a certain size to flow through them. Other channels are specific. Only certain particular molecules can pass through them. By prohibiting the entry of other molecules, including antibiotic drugs, into the cell, the cell wall channels protect the cell contents and enhance the likelihood of the cell's survival. Cytoplasm is the viscid, thick, sticky substance that serves as the matrix for all the interior contents of the cell. Cytoplasm is made up primarily of water accounting for 80% of the total content. It also contains enzymes, nutrients such as carbohydrates and lipids or fats, and other molecules. In most bacteria, the genetic material is contained in one circular chromosome and contains all the hereditary information required to form a new bacterium. The chromosome consists of genes which are made up of deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA. DNA is a material that is composed of long, thin, twisted strands of compounds called nucleotides arranged in a double helix pattern. DNA carries the codes for reproducing specific proteins which determine characteristics or functions of the organism. In higher organisms, such as humans and plants, chromosomes are enclosed in the cell nucleus. Therefore, these organisms are called eukaryotes. In contrast, bacterial cells are prokaryotes since they lack the cell nucleus. In addition to a single chromosome, many bacterial cells contain circular molecules of DNA called plasmids. Plasmids may carry genes that code for resistance to antibiotics and for production of toxins, both of which are important to bacterial survival. However, the
The DNA contained in them is not necessary for reproduction or other basic cell functions. There is more than one type of RNA. Ribosomal RNA and other proteins complex to form the ribosome. Ribosomes are structures that serve as protein factories for a cell. Because a cell cannot survive without proteins, ribosomes are vital to cell life. Like DNA, RNA is a component of all living cells and is composed of nucleotides and arranged in long strands. But unlike the double-stranded DNA, RNA is a single strand of nucleic acid. The primary function of RNA is protein synthesis. The genetic code contained in DNA is transcribed into messenger RNA which then travels to the ribosome. The genetic code is then translated into proteins.